Hello, and welcome to Drash Your Rocket Fuel for any Drupal project. My name is Anna Mikhailova, and I will be uh, leading this presentation today. This presentation was originally meant to be presented live at Drupal Con Portland on April 25th, 28th, 2022. However, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it uh, uh, to Portland, so I decided to record it for you to still be able to enjoy it. So let's dive in. Uh, as I said, let's tell a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Anna Mikhailova. I'm a director of technology at Kalamuna. I'm also Drupal 7, 8, and 9 Acquia Triple Certified Expert. And uh, if I'm not at my computer, I like to be hiking, be in nature, and enjoy the outdoors, and also play and spend time with my dog. So, uh, Kalamuna is currently hiring. We are hiring for multiple positions of developers and project managers and account managers. So if you're interested in changing your new adventure, career adventure, uh, apply at our website to check out on open positions. We are a very friendly bunch of uh, people and uh, we are always happy to welcome somebody to our uh, great community. So what we will cover today? Well, first, we will understand different groups of Drash commands and when to use each of them. We'll just scratch a surface about them, but I encourage you to look deeper into the Drash documentation and the official list of commands. We will learn how to create your own commands, learn how to use Drash generators and generate commonly used code, as well as how to write your custom generators. So we have a lot of mm, things to cover today. Without further ado, let's get started. First and foremost, let's introduce Drash and what it means. Uh, so what is Drash? Well, Drash is Drupal shell. Drash is a PHP application that runs in your terminal and allows you to interact with one or more Drupal projects. Drash core ships these commands for performing various common tasks like clearing the cache, running database updates, and managing configuration. It also provides utilities for executing SQL queries and migrations and for generating scaffolding code for frequently used uh, Drupal core and APIs. So uh, it also allows you to effectively integrate Drupal into CI-CD workflows. And it's a huge uh, lifesaver for DevOps teams, developers, and they build this alike. There are multiple different groups of Drash commands, and we'll touch based on some of them today, uh, but not all of them, just the ones that are the most commonly used, uh, or I found the most commonly used in my day-to-day -day workflow as a full-stack developer. So first the group of commands, which is kind of an essential or baseline commands, is set management tasks. First and foremost, uh, the one that I use a lot is Drash status. And Drash status commands gives you an overview of your site health, similar to the Drupal status administrative report. However, it doesn't return all of the requirements. So if you want full list of requirements, uh, everything that Drash status or administrative page returns, you may want to run Drash requirements. The next ones are database, man manage database management commands. Update database status allows you to check if there are any updates that need to be applied to your website. And update database performs those outstanding updates. Uh, one of the most common commands that everybody learned to use almost on the first day with Drupal is cache create or cache review. Uh, it reveals Drupal registry and clears Drupal render cache and clears Drupal internal cache. So when it doubt cache clear on Drupal, uh, you can also rush core, uh, core cron command to execute cron tasks. It's very useful if you're planning to debug cron or see what's running or what output cron creates when running on your website. So if you see that your cron jobs are failing, you may want to run them through Drush to see if you get any additional outputs that helps you debug the job. And one of another very useful commands in Drash UI or Drash user login that allows you to log in as any user. Very useful on your locals so that you don't have to maintain the password to remember the password all the time. The next group of commands is project management commands. Uh, Drash, uh, Drash allows you to manage projects or uh, modules or themes extensions on your website. 
Uh, Drupal website comes with many projects, like modules and themes. Drush comes with a group of commands that aid in management projects from the common line so that you don't have to use the UI. These commands can check which modules are present on the site code base, report their security status, enable them, uh, uninstall them, and present any additional related to them metadata. Uh, one of the most common commands in the PM group is PM list, shows the list of all available modules. PM enable allows you to enable one or more modules. PM security checks Drupal composer packages for pending security, and PM security PHP checks non-Drupal packages like dependencies that are in vendor folder for pending security updates. PM uninstall and installs one or more modules and the independent modules. So with this group of commands, you can manage your modules and themes from the command line without the need of UI. The next group is development tasks. Since development tasks is one of the most popular ones within the developers, and there are so many different modules that provide additional commands, I group them on the ones that are, I use the most often. However, your list of development tasks might grow or differ from myself, and that's totally fine. I list separated them in the following groups, queue, search API commands, configuration management commands, use related commands and database management commands. Let's dive into the queue. You never use queues in your uh, Drupal development. Uh, you are missing out on the ability to uh, batch together multiple different repeatable tasks uh, and uh, execute them on a majority of nodes. For example, uh, bulk uh, import something, publish, promote to the front page, uh, change uh, the status of author, or do pretty much anything you want in batches. Uh, queue list allows you to see all of the queues on the website. Queue run allows you to run specific queue, and it also takes options in terms of like how long the run should be or amount of items to take. Uh, and queue delete allows you to delete the entire items of the queue. Why would this be useful? Well, most of the time it would be for debugging. Even if you're not building custom imports and migrations, the Qs API might be useful if you're debugging your purge. Uh, sometimes the uh, queues are getting clogged up because of, uh, of a huge amount of items on your website. For instance, maybe uh, the server isn't able to process all of the items since the time that is provided by the cron run. And uh, the things getting clogged up on link checkers, search indexing, or on the other different tasks that are in queue, so on a purge, for instance, for your cache. Uh, in order to unclog things, so you might want to run queue delete and delete the uh, items in the queue. And after that is um, being unclogged, you can actually continue debugging. So very useful tools that they're not only for your personal development on a day to day, but also for debugging other modules that are using queues API. And search API tasks. Search API is one of the most popular search frameworks for Drupal 8 and 9. Um, and it provides additional tasks in order to see the statuses and manipulate indexes through UI. There are more commands, but again, I just listed the ones that I use all the time. You might have been in situations that you use search API in Solar where you know that uh, uh, different uh, Indexing task may take quite a while because uh, if you're doing it through UI and your site is quite big, it may take a while to process it all and you might be sitting and watching that batch uh, operation going forever. So uh, running those tasks through UI helps because it uh, executes it faster than a browser response and it also allows you to see any additional debugging information that might be actually hidden while you're watching the batch process. So first command is search API status. It allows you to get the status of search API indexes on the site. Search API index allows you to actually index all unindexed items. And search API reindex allows you to mark all of the items for reindexing without the loss of data. Search API clear allows you to index data and mark items for reindexing and clear all the index data that was uh, cleared before. It wasn't cleared before. Use tasks. 
Well, views test comes uh, with uh, multiple commands. The ones that I use, I use mostly for debugging and additional uh, development. When would you use it? Well, if you're using a preprocess or um, uh, outer of, uh, hooks and you don't remember machine names of your views and displays, uh, you can use view list to get a list of all views on the site. Uh, you can also execute specific view with a name and display, uh, and the output will be posted in the command line. Why would this be useful? Well, that's very useful for debugging on the production environments when views UI module may not be available. So that's when I uh, usually use it. I also use it when I am writing a custom module as a service to process an outer hook, uh, and I want to see the list of them without going to UI and uh, looking for machine names in there. So very useful for internal development tasks. The next can, set of commands is database management. I'm sure we all uh, ran uh, SQL dump at least once, uh, especially with its uh, option, SQL dump result file. It allows you to dump the database into file. Very useful if you're not able to SSH into database management utility. And you can actually dump uh, the external database into file and then download it to your local machine. SQL drop allows you to drop current database. Please don't use it on production, but on your local, especially if you're writing and debugging migrations, may be very, very useful um, if you uh, work the database during the tests of migration. And SQL CLI from the file allows you to import the database from a file. So the set of these three commands allows you to essentially manipulate the database without the need of database management utility, which is great. The next set is configuration management. This is one of the most simple commands and also the one that we use the most often. Configuration status allows you to check the status of the configuration on your site. Configuration import allows to import the configuration and export allows to export it. So the favorite CIM CX uh, commands that we use all the time during the deployment. Uh, the importance of those commands is also in the uh, CI CD workflow. If you're doing deployments and mm, tests uh, through the GitHub Actions pipeline, uh, Acquia pipelines, uh, uh, or uh, maybe Circle CI or any other CI utility, you will have you may heavily utilize these commands to also import export configuration after the code deployment so that you don't have to do it manually. It's very useful and make it easier uh, on developers when they're doing uh, frequent deployments and urging of pull requests. Well, we just reviewed uh, briefly all of the um, most commonly used uh, trash commands that I frequently use. You may have a uh, difference in, the, in your tool set. Uh, so feel free to uh, figure out your own list of common commands uh, that will be useful for you. Uh, and also, I, as I mentioned, I encourage you to dive deeper into the draft documentation to um, look up all of the possible commands. All concrete modules also provide additional commands that might be of use or interest. So if you are looking for the list of those commands, uh, I recommend you to browse through the module and see uh, what commands they might be providing. Um, however, what, uh, what would you do if uh, you don't find the commands that you need uh, and um, no concrete module provides the commands that you need. Well, you would write your own and the next section of our presentation would be devoted to the custom Drash commands. Um, so first of all, let's dive into the type of those commands. There are three major types of Drash commands. The ones that live in the custom module and relate to the custom module functionality. Uh, those are the most common ones, and the majority of custom Drash commands would be of those type. There are also site-wide Drash commands that are not project-specific, but they actually live and applicable for the entire site. Uh, site-wide commands are usually generators uh, because they can generate code that is uh, applicable site-wide and not for a specific project. And global commands. Uh, so global commands are not part of any Drupal installation, but in they're installed globally and available anywhere, regardless of the uh, presence of Drupal. It's similar to other command line applications like Git or Python Terminus. 
These commands are not supported by default, and developers need to make special configuration inside their drive.yaml file uh, that is in the root drive folder uh, in order for drive to pick up those commands. And we are not going to be focusing on sideway commands or global commands today, but we will focus a little bit more on the custom module ones and write a very, very simple one, just as an example. But first, let's look into Drush Anatomy. Uh, every command uh, will require certain parts to be present before it can be executed. Now, first, every command will need Drush command file. It doesn't have to be a file per command, but there is a, a command file in your module that can store multiple Drush commands. Every command will need its own annotation. That is how Drupal and Drush will learn about the command and interpret where it uh, belongs to, how to call it, what parameters and options it takes. And command methods. This is a method that uh, actually holds the logic of the command and what the command needs to return. Uh, and the services YAML file inside your module that describes that uh, command relationship as a service. And then compose a JSON file in your module. All right. Uh, in order to show you how to make one, I recommend us to dive into code. I will be showing it uh, inside the kalamuna.com website on my local, uh, but that can work in any application on your local environment. Or in the hosting, if you can manip manipulate Drush on your hosting and deploy the files with Git or SFTP. All right, um, so in order to start Drash command, I recommend that we use a generator. What generator is, it's something that allows you to generate commonly uh, used snippets of code. Uh, and um, starting Drash 9, we got a new generator command in Drash. Prior to that, we had the same generators in Drupal console that uh, after Drash 9 actually became um, less popular and uh, I personally prefer code generators with Drush, uh, and I use Drush generators often when I need to generate something that is repeatable, but is uh, requiring a lot of moving parts. So like in this case, a command file and then an annotation and method and service and JSON file, all of that kind of creates a complexity to multiple pieces, and I don't want to keep track of them. So I will be using a generator. You can definitely create all of that manually. But generator just make it easier. So let's go down there, open the command line. And I am currently in the kalamuna.com website. And I would run draft generate. The draft generate command allows you to see all generators from the website. Here we go. Uh, if you scroll a little bit up into the Drush category, you see that there is Drush command file. Copy this and then run Drush generate Drush command file. And it'll answer a couple questions. Like it asks you if it's a machine uh, you, to provide machine module name. So machine module name, you can provide an already existing module. Uh, for instance, if you already have a custom module that you maintain and you want to add trash command to it, you would type that. If you want to create a new module, you can type that. I will be typing a new module right now. Uh, and uh, then I'm actually not going to be using it because I don't want you to watch me type, but I will be using a different module that I generated prior to this. Uh, presentation. However, I'll walk you through the process of uh, creating an absolutely new one. So we'll call it Drush underscore test. And you see that I actually typed Drush custom for this presentation before. So Drush test. And then it asks you for the uh, actual module name, uh, human readable one. So we'll call it Drush test. Uh, then it's asking you for patching. We, we are doing, we are not doing uh, for porting. We are not doing any porting. We are actually uh, making an absolutely brand new Drupal 9, uh, Drush 9 uh, command. So we will skip that question. And it immediately opened up a Drush command file for myself, which is very useful. We will close that. And I will uh, actually go and show you in the, um, 
in the uh, website that is a kalamuna.com website uh, i will show you what it generated so if you go into modules and into custom you can see that i i have drash test modules that we just created and it created composite json it created drash services yaml file and down there in the command directory it created drash test commands file so that's a commands file Awesome. Uh, what you will notice, it didn't create as an info file that you can create either manually or uh, you can always use a generator to generate an info file. Uh, but as I said, I don't want to, to show you uh, typing, so I will be using the modules that I generated right before this presentation. That's called Drash Custom. It's exactly like this one, but I updated certain parameters so that uh, I can show you a bit an example. So let's collapse Drash test and look into Drash custom. As I said previously, uh, we will need multiple things for the Drash command. First would be a custom commands file. We will dive into it in a second. And then we will need to compose a JSON file inside your module and the services. So first and foremost, let's look in the compose a JSON file. In the compose a JSON file, you can notice that uh, all we have is just a standard composer file for the module project. And um, you notice that we also have extra key and a relationship to the services. So we have drag services and then we have drag services YAML and it tells you the version of the drag. That helps uh, because it allows Drupal to find um, uh, the services file later on. So after that, we need to look into the services file. Into the services file, we have a standard declaration of the services. So you probably noticed before, um, if you wrote any services in Drupal, you would have your module services YAML. In this case, since it's Drash specific service, we have Drash services YAML, but uh, the structure of it is exactly the same as any services file in Drupal. Uh, first, you have uh, your services key, then you have name of your module, commands, and then it needs to point to the class of your commands, or specifically to that commands file that I mentioned. And then uh, it tags, it needs to be drag command. So that is all correctly generated for you by the generator, and you don't need to worry about either composer file or the services YAML file, it's all good. The next one, if you use it generated, don't forget to create the info YAML file I created in here. Then it's just a standard module uh, YAML file like Drash Custom is a module name, the type of module, description, uh, core version requirement, and the package is custom. Just a standard info YAML file for Drupal. You can create it manually or again uh, run the generator to generate just an info YAML. Uh, but without that module, you won't be able to install, uh, without this file, you won't be able to install the module. So I urge you to make sure that the file is in place. And then the most important thing is Drash custom commands. You also notice that it already created the right hierarchy of directories for you, which is very important and useful because sometimes it may be tedious to keep creating those directories and placing files in. So Drash custom commands. Down here, what we need to update, everything else is pretty good, but what we will need to update is an annotation and a command uh, and a command uh, logic uh, command method. Okay, so in here, Uh, in the command uh, above the command method, we have an annotation. This is a little bit different from the original one, and I will show you uh, what it comes with. So you can see that it comes with pretty, pretty good defined annotation, which has the description and some parameters, option definitions, usage, and uh, a command key and aliases. But that's about it. Let's go back to the ones that I. Uh, updated. So down here, you can see that I updated uh, this uh, line with what the command will be doing. 
I will be passing in our commands that we are writing today, we will be getting returning all of the terms uh, of a specific vocabulary. So we will be passing the vocabulary to our custom draft command and it will return all the terms uh, and IDs and names uh, that are present there. So we will need the parameter of vocabulary and it will be a string. Uh, I also want to uh, process our results and I'll put them as a table. So there are a couple special uh, parameters over here, field labels, create a uh, header of the table. So uh, we will have uh, a field, a key ID, the heading will be term ID, and with the key name, the heading will be term name. And then we also have default fields, ID and name. Uh, that is useful if you want to specify some um, possible uh, fields that you want to skip in your command. We are not going to modify it today, but just an option. And then uh, we also have usage key that will show the help text for users when they see the list of your commands. Uh, so it helps to understand how to use the command. So in our case, uh, they say that you can use it typing drash custom get terms and passing in a vocabulary. Uh, and then uh, this is Actually, uh, a command key allows you to specify how to call the command. So this one uh, shows a help text for the user, but that is the one that actually uh, specifies how to call the command. So we'll call it draft custom get terms, and that is a command name. Oh, and uh, actually, I need to rename it to be get term here. Awesome. And then uh, alias is uh, specified the alias for the command. So you probably notice like DRAC X for exporting the configuration. Um, you don't need to type uh, like config export. You can actually do CEX. So that would be the alias. And we specify an alias for all commands as get terms. And we want to return role of fields, so like that table in the common line. So that's why I'm specifying this consolidation role of fields. Uh, class. You don't have to. There are so many different ways of returning data out of draft commands. I just thought that would be a nicer output format. And then there is this. That is basically the default generated table output format. We don't need it. So, uh, but that was an example from the generator. So, a very nice one. You don't really have to have it. So, we can actually uh, delete it, the comment it out, but it doesn't really influence anything, so we can just keep it. All right. Um, you can delete it later in your real application. Now, in the logic of the command, all we need to do, as I said, it's a very simple command just for demonstration. We need to get all of the terms based on a special vocabulary. So I'm using this. If you want to write it for reals, like um, for your actual project and you're planning to keep it, I would recommend to go with a construct and create and do dependency injection. Uh, but since that is just for them and I'm not planning to use it, I call the static entity type manager here. It allows me to get the storage of taxonomy term and load the tree based on the vocabulary. Um, and I only need term ID and name, so I don't need to load actual entities. I just do the slight wave load tree. Then I have an array of rows and I circle through my terms and uh, I uh, add the keys that I specified over here, ID and name, and I map them to the term ID and term name. And that's it. After that, I just return row of fields and I return rows. All right, that's good. Once you've done that, you need to enable your module. Mine is already enabled, but you can enable your module by drash enable uh, drash underscore custom dash y. Or you can do drash pm enable, but uh, this is an alias for the pm enable, so I will use that. It will tell me that it's already enabled. Yes. And then you need to clear drash cache. So you do drash cc drash. And by the way, at the top, you see that I put D, it's just an alias in my terminal, so I don't need to type drash all the time. Uh, drash CC drash allows to clear drash cache. 
And when you clear in the draft cap, this is when it registers the new draft command. And then you do draft get. Get terms. So that's that's a command that they just wrote. And then we need to pass a vocabulary. I know that on my website I have a vocabulary of topics. Those are topics for our blogs. So I will just do that. And you can see it returned as a table, a pretty table of topics with IDs and term name. It's very easy. So that's how you will uh, be able to create your custom Drash command. Again, what you will need in the commands file is a correct annotation with um, a command uh, property, aliases property is optional, and then any parameters you want. Uh, and the usage one allows you to put help text and show it to the user. And then uh, you will also need update the logic of your command and return the result, uh, as well as uh, specify draft services, YAML, and then compose JSON. But as I mentioned, if you're using draft generator, that is very easy to do, and you don't have to worry about making correctly all the classes. So I Highly recommend you, if you start with your dash command, uh, do it through the generator because it's just easier. All right, uh, that was about the dash commands. Since we touch based on the generator, let's dive into that. So uh, there are a lot of available generators that came with Drash 9. Before Drash 9, there were no generators in Drash, but as I mentioned, they were in Drupal console project. Um, the Drupal console still can be used, and it's often referenced in tutorials about Drupal, but I prefer generated code by Drash at this point because it seems to be the way forward. Um, to see all available generator options, as we already um, saw, you need to run Drash generate command in the command line, and you will be able to see all of the different generators. Generators can be provided in Drash core, uh, and generators can be provided by modules. It generates a command that is responsible for one scaffold that describes the right column of the output. So uh, in the core, we have available generators like global. They can be used in multiple contexts in Drupal project. Drash specific generators, we just used one for the Drash command. Form, form related generators, modules for folding, plugins like block plugins, use, migration, so on and so forth, all types of plugins, services, scaffold for services classes, tests. Scaffolds for the test classes, theme scaffolding, and YAML files like info YAML file, and so on and so forth. Uh, so let's find the batch generate and look at them again. So this right column actually tells you what the generator is about, and they all grouped into different groups, as I showed you. And there's literally everything you can imagine under the sun. And uh, speaking of uh, info YAML file for the module, so this is for the theme. There is also module info YAML that you can use and generate, and just answer the questionnaire and then generate the code for you, which is very useful and very straightforward. If you need the module development, the theme development, may be a very good uh, starting point for yourself. All right, uh, so let me uh, show you how to create your own generator. Uh, to create your own generator, you will probably need to put it into the outside uh, generator folder. It depends on uh, uh, what type of a file you want to generate, but I would like to generate um, custom settings local PHP file. Uh, you know that different agencies and different developers put different things in the settings local file, like Kint, um, uh, specific settings, browser sync settings, uh, email rerouting, um, you know, mail services, caching, all of the different things. And kind of that different people prefer different things. So, example files that is coming with Drupal core doesn't always fit the needs and it's always annoying to copy paste. So having a generator in your website or in your boilerplate for your website project helps so that you can clean that into give your teammate can collaborate on these files. 
and you can just uh, get it into your folder right out of those bats. So it's very useful, very easy. Um, I recommend uh, doing it like that. It's also useful for development services, YAML, if they separate from uh, what Core provides, or maybe special robots TXT needs, or anything like that that you find repeatedly changing in your Drupal projects may be useful to put into the generator. Um, all right, so let's start with uh, looking back into our code. So I will be showing what uh, uh what it is uh but yeah uh let me look into it uh for you so in here we have a draft folder that you can create in the root of your uh website and it needs to be next to this web or doc root uh, directory that you're using for your drupal site so like core is inside that web root directory you create draft and then you need a, a capital letter generators folder and inside there you will need to generate a class so we have settings local generated php over here and uh, that is basically a, a generator class uh, and then generate a class uh if it will be an extending basic generator and first thing that you need is a name of the generator. So the name acts as almost like an annotation. It tells um, uh, the generate command of how to call the generator. So we will be calling it as settings local custom. Uh, the description will be generates custom settings file. And then uh, alias would be settings local PHP, not just for the aliases of the command. And then the tall we tell it where to put it. So usually settings local PHP lives in the site's default folder. So that's where we put it. And then template pass is the same as the generated directory. That's what we said. The generator needs an interact method with input and output interface. First, you need to specify amount of questions or questions that you will ask in order to uh, determine certain options for the generators. We will be uh, asking for database name, database password, and database username. So those are the questions we get. Then we gather these questions, validate them, and after that we will add a file settings local PHP in the site's default and uh, a template um, uh, that we will be using for it will be settings local so we mentioned that this template will live next to the generator file. So that's where I created it. And I literally just copy pasted the entire settings local PHP that I typically use for my local development. The only difference you notice that in the databases array in here, I am placing the three variables, db name, db password, and db username. And the names of these variables match the keys that I used in my questions. Now is that? Uh, all we need to do after that is run drash cc drive. All right. And then after that's done, uh, we can do drash generate. In our settings file, you can see settings local custom. That's the one that we created for ourselves. And then we copy that and do drash generate and paste so let's do drash generate settings local custom i run it and it asks me for the database name so i'll call it kcom and then the password one two three four those are not real passwords and the username test then it detected that it wants me uh to regenerate settings local file because it already exists. I don't really want to uh, regenerate mine, so I will do no. But if you want a new one and it didn't exist, then you press yes, and it will generate the settings local file in the correct folder for you. All right. And that was all that I wanted to talk to you today. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to reach me on Twitter at Sunny Inotic. I'm also in Drupal Slack and on Drupal Org. 
Uh, so feel free to pin us there or visit us and send us uh, contact form information at kalamunda.com. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, let's keep in touch and I hope you had a fantastic Drupal con. So sad that I wasn't able to make their interesting, but hopefully next year. Thanks so much and uh, have a great Drupal week. Bye everybody.